words of counsel, words of advice. There may be just one thing you will pick tonight, tomorrow, the next, that will transform your life. And I pray that will happen to you. So while you are here, please relax, listen up, and enjoy yourself. I want to dance, I want to eat, I want to rejoice with you. We want to kill tension tonight. Is that okay? So I welcome you all. I welcome our polyglots. He's a Yoruba man, but he speaks, I don't know how many languages. He speaks, and when he speaks Igbo, I can tell you he's pronouncing the Igbo well. That's the truth. And I welcome all our guests, wherever you're from. I can see the DSS representative here, madam. Thank you so much for coming. We need to recognize them. Please, we still want you to come tomorrow. Is that okay? Thank you very much. So on that note, I would say I welcome you all to Christian land, to Christian land, to Christian land for eating, dining, and everything. Don't worry. In between, we will disappear so that you can dance. But well, Mama told me one thing. She said, please, don't allow them to dress anyhow. So I don't know those at the gates. Mama said, don't allow them to dress what? Anyhow. Dr. Messi, are you hearing me? That's the instruction from mommy. But I know they will dress well. These are these these children have gone through thorough training. Academically, morally, spiritually. They are one of the best. They trust people, they are here. They tell you that Christland is one of the most peaceful campuses in Nigeria, and I believe it. So I know they will not disappoint us. Thank you very much. Thank you, our music people. I'm enjoying you. It's not time to spray you yet. It has not reached. <laughs> so, all right. We will quickly take the keynote address for tonight while we are still very calm and collected. Because once we go into the merrymaking, eating, wine and dining, attention will be somewhat distracted. Please um, join me for this keynote. You know, if an American poet, Wendell Holmes Senior, did say that it is the province of knowledge to speak and the privilege of wisdom to listen tonight. I request that you kindly listen with rapt attention to our keynote speaker, the wife of the senior pastor of Victory Life Bible Church. Happy as it comes to the mountain to bless you here tonight. Good evening, everybody. I'm sure you'll be hearing hallelujah from my mouth. <laughs> well, I want to appreciate um, the opportunity of standing here tonight to give this keynote address. And I trust that it will be um, a blessing unto every one of us, not just to the graduates to every one of us here tonight. Um, from the letter that I was given, I was told that we are considering the wise graduate, the wise graduate. And it is based on that that I have uh, focused tonight. I want to appreciate um, the Chancellor of the University. She's not here, but I'm sure she's hearing us. I want to thank God for our life. Can we put our hands together and celebrate our please? Also, let me celebrate the Vice Chancellor of this great university, Professor Chinedu Peace Babalola. Um, they've so much said so, I mean, they've said so much good things about her tonight, and I concur, I agree with all the adjectives that have been used for her. She's such a lovely, beautiful, focused um, visionary. And I want to thank God for the great record that she has laid, the legacy that she's laying um, 
thank God for the conclusion of the first time. Congratulations, man. Beautiful. Can we celebrate her for that? Great one, great one, great one. You've done so great, marvelous work you have done. And uh, thank God for this next time. And I trust the God that helped you for the first time. He will help you for the second time. And greater works you will do. Because uh, the light, the path of the just is as the light that shines brighter and brighter. And I believe Chris Land will continue to shine brighter in the name of Jesus. And the peace that they have, um, uh, they have uh, said reigns in this place, which we all are witnesses to, will continue to be so in the name of the Lord Jesus. Mama, good evening, Ma. Epidometer, Ma. God bless you. Thank you so much. Let me celebrate Mama Obasanjo for me. Mama Nigeria. <laughs> Celebrate her, celebrate her. You're looking so beautiful. God bless you. The Lord bless you, Ringo. And I celebrate all the staff of Priestland University and all the officers. Thank God for the great work you are doing. And I trust that God will keep taking you forward in the name of Jesus. Amen. I want to congratulate the graduates tonight. I know tomorrow is the graduate, I mean the graduate, um, graduation ceremony, but tonight I want to congratulate you for the successful journey that you have embarked on in this beautiful university and for stepping out in flying colors. I want to thank God, I want to celebrate you, I want to congratulate you, I want to, what again can I say? Well done. Great job you have done. Um, the person that led the opening prayer said they didn't record any casualty about you. Uh, none of you, they didn't lose you. There was no evil that was recorded about you. And uh, the climax of it is that you finished and you finished well. I always tell people it's not starting that really matters, but the ability to finish well. Thank God that you finished. Congratulations. Can we clap for ourselves? Congratulations. No matter the grades that you have, I want to say congratulations. Many people started, they didn't finish, but you started and you finished. And the God that has brought you to this phase of your life will take you forward in the name of Jesus. In a few minutes, I just want to pass across about four things to our understanding and I want everybody to try and listen and let there be less distraction in the all. Let there be less distraction in the all, please. Let's listen attentively. In my study, not just as a spiritual person, but even in terms of education, I've come to understand that there are about four questions that are necessary for life fulfillment. And I want you to listen very well to me. The first question is what I know everybody goes to do in any educating, educational institution, and that is our intelligence quotient which is a function of a comprehension. And I'm sure in this school, you have been well equipped, well taught, well trained, that you, you, there is nothing as part of your discipline that you will not be able to be an expert or a master. So that portion definitely is necessary for fulfilling your life. And I won't address that too much because that has been done by your lecturers, that has been done in these walls of this university. The second quotient, which I may focus more, is what I call the emotional quotient. And somebody may call it emotional intelligence, which is actually a representation of your character. The ability, I'm sure graduates are listening to me. Where are the graduates so that I will know where to focus? Thank you, thank you, thank you. Ability to understand, use, and manage your own emotions in positive ways. Number one, so that you will be able to relieve stress, 
you will be able to communicate effectively. You will also be able to empathize with others and also have the ability to overcome challenges. Your emotional intelligence is a build up of your core self. That is your person. And I'm talking like this because we are starting a new phase in time. A phase where your student is over. And now you can say, I've graduated. And we are stepping into the world. Looking at the world, Nigeria, that is our own immediate environment, you will discover that there is a lot of stress that is waiting for us out there. There is a stretch of success pressure. Um, one of the things I've learned here is the music band, the, the people by the band, that they said they are students, but at the same time, I doubt if the person that is in charge will use nothing to work, because that is just his discipline, but of course he has discovered the purpose. Because one of the things that makes you great in life is the discovery of your purpose. Now, as we step into the world, there are a lot of things waiting for us there, like I said, because of our own immediate environment. There's that success pressure. I want to make it. And sometimes we want to survive. And there is what they normally call the rat race, where people compete and struggle for wealth and for power. There's also going to be a lot of peer pressure out there, where you will see people doing things I will still get there that probably you should not do but because of you want to survive you want to make it and then you want to follow you know their line which may not be too good for who you represent now a man said and i quote emotional intelligence is the ability to sense understand and effectively apply the power and acumen of emotions. Listen to this as a source of human energy, information, connection, and influence. Paraphrased in this way, it forms your drive in life. After you have gone through the four walls of the university, what are you going to drive at? What will be your driving? What would, I mean, what would drive you? Where are you going to? These are questions you need to ask yourself. Now, it also forms your direction, the decision to take that direction that will be profitable for your life. It also forms your connection and you are able to connect with others because I believe so much that no man is an island. We need ourselves to succeed. It also forms our influence. Uh, influence, let me say it. No matter how young you feel you are, one thing about life is what you will be remembered for in life. And that is the influence, the legacy you are going to leave. And it is not, you are not too young to be thinking of that. In the word of the wise man in Ecclesiastes chapter 12 verse 13, permit me to use it. He said, let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandment, for this is the whole duty of man. I hope the graduates are listening to me. It's very critical that the fear of God should form the foundation of your life, the foundation of your decision, the foundation of the way you will think, the way you will feel, and the way you will behave as you step out of the university. So, looking at that, one thing I don't want you to close your eyes to as you go out is what I call the God factor. Who directs you, who pushes you, who drives you to really be who he wants you to be. You must understand, ladies and gentlemen, beyond what I've read, what is the essence of my existence? Why am I here on earth? You must be able to juxtapose what you have read with your purpose, the reason for your existence in life. Because sometimes it is beyond your qualification, and that's what we are seeing here. And thank God even the MC said he read a Greek, but look at what he's doing here. What's the essence of my existence? Ability to place your hands in his hands, not in the hands of man necessarily, but God, you will help me. Um, today's world, they believe they can do it by themselves, but I've seen that strength by strength.
strength shall no man prevail. Every one of us, man or woman, old or young, we need the God factor in our life. Scripture was saying that without me, you can do nothing. Did somebody help me finish that verse? Without me, somebody help me finish it. I can do nothing. Can you say it again? Say, without God, I can do nothing. So it's very important, ladies and gentlemen, for us, graduates, as tender as you are, there are things that you will avert that your mate may not be able to if you put your hands in his hands. There are troubles that we will not partake of if only you put your hands in his hands and let him be the deciding factor of your life that pushes you as you leave this place. Somebody may say, yes, I'm now an adult, I'm now this, they won't be chasing me about because in Christland they monitor, they control, they do all those things. Now I'm free, I'm free. Please, know the level with which you enjoy your freedom. Let God be the center of all that you will do. And as you do that, I can guarantee you that there will be safety for your future. There will be safety for your career. There will be safety for business. If you want to be an entrepreneur, there will be safety even in marriage. I used to pray this for my people in church and even everyone connected to me all across the globe that you will not marry with sin. <laughs> there are many people that marry busy because they close their ears to the God factor in their life. So the God factor is very essential. Number two, still on emotional intelligence, the discipline you put into your life. Mm, motivation is not the only drive to success, but intentionality of discipline. But focusing on your desired destiny <laughs> and then disciplining yourself to ensure that I get there. You have left the school, what else are you going to do? The God factor is there. Then I discipline myself. There are things that others can do that you must make up your mind that I'm not going to do because it's not going to take you there. So it's very important. So one of the discipline is the management of your day. This leaves out of our hand is an asset. At the same time, if you don't use it well, it can be wasted. So it's very important for you not to look at yourself that I'm too young or I'm still young because you are not going to be young forever. And so if you don't take advantage of the day to make your day to count, ladies and gentlemen, it will just live by you. So stop procrastinating for what you need to do. Discipline yourself with time. Discipline yourself with your resources. Discipline yourself the way you manage your day-to-day -day life. The third thing I will say that, I think I will end with that before I say one or, that, one or two things, is the values you put into your life. Now listen to me, graduates. A good name is better than riches. Be careful of how you run after what looks to glitter like gold and it is not gold. Integrity matters. Make up your mind, you know, to maintain a good name. Don't say they are just saying they are born. I always tell people that when you close your eyes to advice and to counsel, many times you are going to come back to meet that person. Like your Robert Puba will say, Ilela Putinjoku. Praise the Lord. You may not understand that because I don't think you understand your love very well. A good name is better than rich. Number two, bring in the value of excellence. Anything you want to do, do it well. Don't do things with an average mindset. Don't, don't be casual with life. Be intentional with life. Be intentional with your choices. Be intentional with your friendship. Be intentional with what you do. It's a value system. Excellent. And you cannot compromise excellent for anything. Another value that I don't want you to close eyes is to love. Number one, love yourself. I've told you about the God factor. Love God. But at the same time, love yourself, love yourself to put yourself on the right course so that you don't fall into the pit that may redeem for you. Beyond loving yourself is love others. Love others, don't be too self-centered. Don't want to make it at every cost, at the detriment of another person's life. Don't, don't be self-centered that you don't consider 
the life of others. It is very, very important. Diligence is the key. Be diligent with what your hands find to do. The Bible says, whatsoever your hands find to do, what do you do? Do it well. Do it with all your heart. And know that there is a place called there that God is taking you to. Now, bring honor and respect and dignity as values into your life. We cannot shy away with cultural, you know, cultural, I would like to put it, knowledge, you know, that is the aspect of honor, honor men. Because when you honor men, you will be honored in life as you step out of this great university. The social quotient is the ability to have productive and profitable relationships. Let me quickly run through this. Everybody cannot be your friend, so you must pick your friend and choose your friend. There are people that want to distract you from focus. There are people that want to deceive you from life, from your life focus. And there are people that want to discourage you by circumstances of your life. So please, ladies and gentlemen, you know, social quotient means that I locate the right person, you know, I locate my friend, I locate the person that we have, you know, similar vision. If you are not going the way I'm going, please, I cannot follow you. So you, it is not by force for you to ask somebody, yeah, we need man in life, but not every man is needed. So you must be able to open your eyes, open your ears, open your heart to understand and have illumination of your heart when you see detractors and excuse yourself. When you see deceivers, excuse yourself. Uh, Professor Chidi Dun said you have been taught properly spiritually and I know your spiritual ethics will help you and uh, guide you in having profit and productive friendship and uh, in my word of prayer I want to pray that you will not be joined to spoilers of life you will not be joined to wasters of life and you will not be joined to destroyers of life and I end on this note with adversity quotient and that is the ability for you to bear things resilience ladies and gentlemen put it at all cost I will make it no matter what comes my way, I will break the band. I will break the jeans. Focus, tenacity, resilience, and keep at it. I see you greater than your parents. I even see you greater than your lecturers. I'm sure your lecturers will say amen to that. I see you greater than them. Wherever Professor Chile Dombabalola has reached, you will go beyond that in the name of Jesus. So adversity quotient makes you tough makes you to be elastic and flexible that no matter what comes your way. That was a very beautiful. I dare say, can we put our hands together again? Thank you very much. Je voudrais vous assurer que ici à Queensland University, c'est-à-dire la université de Queensland, il n'y a pas de problème. Ici, il y a la paix. En anglais, on dit peace. Il y a la paix. Donc, il faut rester avec nous et amusez-vous bien. Merci beaucoup à tout le monde. Si vous comprenez tout ce que j'ai déjà expliqué, il faut applaudir. Yoruba, 
to go and see the limit I have stopped. Now you come outside, go and make money. You're like, some people say, you're my investment. I bet some people say that, you're my investment. So they feel like okay, I'm investing into you. Now you go and bring back that investment for me. I want a return. So I should watch us performing this drama. Don't just watch the funny part, which they will be. But get to get the lessons in it. There's a meaningful lesson in every single thing that has been passed. Thank you. 
the Lord. Hallelujah. I'm so inspired to hear a single man speaking so many languages. And uh, to be in this congregation, um, let me stand on existing protocol. As I brought you greetings from our Baba, Chief Holy Shepherd, messages. So, I could see what is happening. Immediately I entered this compound, I felt the peace of the Lord. I seen all the uh, students coming out. Education is very good though. You can see and you can see how confident they are.
Vice Chancellor, Registrar, the Dean of Colleges, other members of staff, and our graduating students. Firstly, I would like to appreciate the opportunity given to me here to say one or few words to all of you this evening. And I would like to say a big thank you to the Chancellor for being here to support our students during their graduation. God bless you, you're welcome. And also, the Vice Chancellor for our own dying love for the students and the university. Thank you, ma'am. I want to say that this particular set that they are graduating, I have learned one or two things from them. They have inspired me a lot, they have taught me, and they have motivated me. Thank you all. I know it's not an easy task completing a four year course for this university with all the challenges and everything going on. All of you seated here today, I don't see you all as leaders of tomorrow. I see you all as great influencers that your leadership begins from today. And I, and I also want to appreciate the chairperson of the Students' Representative Council, the person of Motola, Richard Oluri, for our efforts for teaching us, the members of the Students' Representative Council, how to become transformational leaders. Thank you. I'm so glad I was able to work and serve with you all. And I must say that this is actually the best set in this school that inspired me a lot. So let me just say this to you all. Just so you know, as you go out there, I want you guys to sell knowledge. I want you guys to change the world because you guys are Christmas and you stand for something. above the sky, the sky that we look. Am I right? Yes. The plane will now go above. You will now be looking at the sky under. At that point, you will not see anything again. You will see any house, no matter how big the house, no matter how big the sky is, all you now see is sky. So, the sky, when you say the sky is the beginning, that's correct. The sky is the beginning of your success. All right, um, quickly, we want to have our session organized by the students in this case. May I kindly invite all Miss Olami Paul Johnson, please put your hands together for her. Invite to the stage, um, Fola Olori, Tommy Se, and Jeremiah. Fola Olori, Tommy Se, and Jeremiah. The Vice Chancellor, <laughs> Professor Mrs. Chinedu Peace Babalola. F-A-S, F-A-S-S, F-A-A-S, please can you help appreciate the Vice Chancellor, this is a recognition for her service and leadership, leadership. and sacrifice and love uh, and um, just being an epitome of excellence and example to all of us. She has been an exceptional leader.
award to my boss, Melga. I served on him for four years in the chaplaincy unit. Thank you. 